All right. All right, you elemental arrows shooting bastards. Here is my ultimate elemental ranger build. In this build, we are focusing on not using elemental arrows, although they will be in our inventory and they can be used to great extent. My main focus is to buff our attacks with magical damage that will destroy our opponents easily. This is what I've come up with. This build is based on geomancy and poisonous attacks. We will not be using any spells except the ones that buff and some spells like contamination, poison wave and poison dart to get that poison surface that we need to get the buff by using skills like elemental arrowheads and siphon poison. The basis of this build is to buff our arrows with fire and venom at the same time. So how can we do that? It's simple. We need one poison surface. If you do not have poison surface, you can always use flesh sacrifice on your ranger. And then just use contamination on the blood that will be created beneath you. And now you have poison surface. Another way is to just use poison wave. That will give you earth immunity and then shoot poison arrow beneath your feet. That will not hurt you. And you'll be able to use that same surface to implement poison to your arrow attacks by using elemental arrowhead and siphon poison. Siphon poison, elemental arrowhead and venom coating all stack together. So right now we are doing insane amount of venom damage while all three buffs are active. And on top of that we'll also add firebrand. So we are now doing fire and venom damage. Fire damage will not be as high. It's going to be the least important of all three, but it's still going to add something to the mix. Let's get started with the explanation of the whole build, attributes, combat abilities and talents. I've focused only on wits in this build. If you want, the rest of the points can be put to finesse to get more physical damage out of your auto attacks or you can put it more into intelligence to get more damage from skills like poison dart, poison wave, contamination. They all scale with intelligence and geomancy. I went with intelligence, finesse is only from gear. Wits is the most important to increase that critical chance. From that critical chance we will do high damage by implementing a lot of points into Scoundrel. Next to Scoundrel your options are Geomancy and Pyrokinetic. You're going to need two points into Pyrokinetic, sorry, three points into Pyrokinetic to use Firebrand. Other than that, everything else can be put into Geomancy. If you want, another option is to also use same amount of points into Geomancy and Pyrokinetic, that way your Firebrand attacks will hurt more and your Fire Arrows will hurt more as well. But I like Geomancy more for this setup because I'm using more Geomancy spells and buffs. Another thing that should be implemented is Huntsman. You're gonna need 3 points into Huntsman to use all the necessary abilities. I'm not going to use in this video anything like Arrow Storm that would absolutely annihilate everyone in one turn. I'm using only basic skills and the one thing that I'm using that uses source points is Venomous Aura. To craft Venomous Aura you can simply use any kind of skill books from Geomancy and Scoundrel trees and combine them together but one of them needs to have source point requirement to get venom coating which is basically venomous aura but only works on the caster you need to combine any geomancy and any scoundrel skill book but they must not have any source point requirements to recap to get all the skills and talents necessary you need one point into warfare for the executioner talent Max out Scoundrel so that your critical multiplier gets high enough. Get as many points as you can in Geomancy to increase all the poison damage that you're going to do from these skills that are infusing your weapon with poison damage. Three points into Pyrokinetic are needed for Firebrand. And three points into Huntsman for all the Huntsman abilities. 
From talents, I'd go with Executioner, Glass, Cannon and Hothead as a must. You're going to need a lot of action points to buff yourself properly and Glass Cannon can help you with that. Another thing that you can use is also Adrenaline from Scoundrel Tree to help you with the buffs. Others are optional. I went with Savage Sortilage so that I can crit with Poison Dart and Poison Wave and Contamination. And I also went with Elemental Ranger. Elemental Ranger does not work with Poison. Unfortunately, whenever I've shot someone on a Poison surface, it never did additional Poison damage. It does work with Fire. And that's why I would use it here. You'll get additional benefits from it, but it's completely optional. I would understand if no one wants to go with Elemental Ranger, because there are some good options instead of Elemental Ranger and Savage Sortilage. Options like Duck Duck Goose, that will let you away the tax of opportunity. Torturer is also a good choice here, because we are doing burning and poison damage after we get rid of enemy's magic armor. It's useful in party, because you won't be able to get enemies down as quickly as with Lone Wolf. When using Lone Wolf character, it's not useful at all. You'll be bringing down opponents before that thing can do any significant amount of damage. It only increases the duration of status effects like burning and poison for one turn. I don't believe it affects the damage of it. I haven't seen any difference. I've tried testing it. Nothing changed. So I believe it only affects the duration, not the damage. If you want to one-shot people, Guerrilla is also an option before the start of the battle. That way you can do insane amount of damage from stealth. But these are all optional. It's up to you how you want to play it from here on out. Just use Glass Cannon, Hothead and Executioner. Now the problem is when you encounter undead enemies. And during the first region you're going to encounter a lot of undead enemies. They are all healing from poison. So now you have an issue on your hands. That's why in your inventory you should always have some poison arrows in case you need to create poison pool next to you and explosive and fire arrows. Everyone that is immune or heals from poison will take damage from fire. That is fixed. Unless there's some kind of a unique enemy that I can't think of right now. Another thing that you should do in that case is get yourself a weapon that does not have any kind of bonus elemental damage. Usually adding poison damage to your bow or crossbow would be a good idea, especially with all the buffs that stacks that stack on each other. And that means more damage from your attacks. But the issue is that Firebrand stacks with Venom Coating and poison damage on your weapon. That means if you put Firebrand and poison at the same time on your weapon, you'll be doing fire and poison damage, but poison damage will outdo the fire damage. And then that way you'll just end up healing the undead opponents. Doesn't matter that you have fire damage. Having a bow or crossbow with one slot open could be very beneficial because you can switch then source orb with fire rune that way you'll be doing bonus elemental fire damage source orb is extremely good against anyone that is not immune to poison it gives you venom coating for all your party members around you and it lasts for four turns instead of normal two turns from the base venom coating one other thing is that if you use fire rune in that situation and combine it with firebrand you'll do more fire damage that's the way to prepare for enemies that are immune to poison you won't be doing as much damage as with poison attacks but you'll be significant in a fight nonetheless you'll be doing normal physical damage with fire added damage Obviously, elemental rangers are very useful in mixed damage parties. That physical damage cannot be removed, so you'll be doing it constantly as it is. Good thing is, if you strip down enemy of physical and magical armor, then that physical plus all the elemental damage that you're doing next to it will be combined and damage enemy's vitality with physical and magical. So it's going to be massive. To recap, Get yourself bow or crossbow without any elemental property. 
it needs to have one rune slot available. If you're fighting against opponents that are not immune to poison, then use Source Orb. If you're fighting opponents that are immune to poison, put in one fire rune and with Firebrand it will create a decent amount of fire damage. You also have fire and explosive arrows to be used. Your gear should be focused heavily on wits. So get everything that would buff your wits. My wits is currently crap, I only have plus 7 from gear because I did not optimize it very well. But doesn't matter. You can get your crit chance up to around 75%. It shouldn't be a problem, especially from levels 14, 15 and so on. Now to explain how to build this from start, from the beginning of the game. Now that's slightly more complicated. We are focusing on wits. And that is an issue, because in early game you won't be able to get as many wits as you want, not even close, simply because gear won't give you a lot of critical chance early in the game. And you won't have many open slots and many flame runes, especially giant flame runes, that would increase your critical chance by a lot. Another issue that in Fort Joy and Hollow Marshes you're going to fight a lot of undead enemies. That is a horrible thing for this build. What I would suggest for Fort Joy and Hollow Marshes is this. Focus your ranger on finesse, forget about wits. From combat abilities I do something like this if you want to be a proper elemental ranger in Fort Joy and Hollow Marshes. One point into warfare so that you can get executioner talent. Two points into huntsman and the rest of the points into pyrokinetic. Pyrokinetic will scale the damage of your weapon if it has flame rune or if it has by default bonus fire elemental damage. You should always have crossbow or bow with fire damage in the first region if you want to be an elemental ranger during the first region. Firebrand will not be accessible in first region. I believe this skill can only be obtained when you are higher level around 14, 15, 16. I'm not sure, can't remember correctly. But you're going to have fire arrows and explosive arrows at your disposal during the first region. And you can always craft those and they will scale with pyrokinetic. That's how I would build my elemental ranger for the first region where there's a lot of undead. And that way we can directly counter them. From the start, talents like executioner and glass cannon would be the best choice. Action points are needed here so that you can buff yourself properly. Adrenaline can also be obtained during the first region, so it shouldn't be a problem adding adrenaline to your arsenal. As from the skills, really there's nothing to be explained, everything has been shown. Get Huntsman abilities and later add all these poisonous buffs to your weapon. Farsight in combination with Ballistic Shot can be extremely powerful, which you will see during the fighting phase. So that's also an option for later. Our pals at Paladin Bridge had some time off, because I wasn't doing any ultimate builds for some time. And now that they had their break, it's time to remind them who's the boss in arcs once again. Immediately I'm gonna put 45 before the battle. And start off with a simple poison dart. Now what I can do is this. Flash sacrifice. Gonna grant me one action point. 10% damage and blood on the floor. We'll use contamination. To deal some more damage to these bastards. And also to create poison beneath our feet. Now I'll use Venom Coating, Elemental Arrowheads, Firebrand, Siphon Poison. Now we have ton of Elemental Buffs. Fire and Poison. They work together very well and we shall immediately use Reactive Shot. It's one of the best skills 
from Huntsman Tree. It needs to get nerfed quickly, but while it's still decent, we're gonna use it to get rid of these bastards on the bridge. I'm not worried about taking too much physical damage, I'm more worried about elemental damage because my magic armor is low and these elementalists can strip me of, magic arm of my magic armor pretty easily. So what I can do is for example use Farsight that will increase the range of my auto attacks and spells. So I will use Ballistic Shot and unfortunately it's not enough to target them. Well, that's right, we got healer here. That's gonna get absolutely destroyed in one shot. 15, so around 16,000 poison, 2,000 fire. And we also did some physical too, around 3,000. There's also this bastard over here. Not anymore. And now I have three action points remaining, gonna use that on Barrage. Well, this guy is the tankiest of them all, so it's not surprising that he survived. Here comes the Elementalist. Elemental arrowheads should be used in poison, because we get bonus from Geomancy. Depends on how you've built this particular build. You might even use them on fire, it's up to you, if you have 5 poison in pyrokinetic and 5 poison in geomancy, completely up to you. Currently I still have 1 turn with all the buffs remaining and when that goes on cooldown, I can use firebrand immediately and I can also use venomous aura to add that venom coating again and that will last for 4 turns. So I'm not worried about getting rid of my elemental damage. We still have reactive shot available, so why not bloody use it? You can see the power of the elemental damage on this ranger. We are doing minimal physical damage, while the elemental is absolutely ridiculous. Here we did actually pretty, actually pretty decent amount of physical damage around 9,000, but the majority of it was from poison, around 19,000. Obviously this is all with, wound, with Lone Wolf. You'll do at least twice as less without Lone Wolf. That is obvious. Now the cool thing that we can also do here is Poison Wave, that will make us immune to earth damage. Look at this, not bad at all, right? for one simple spell such as Poison Wave. What I still didn't show you is the power of Elemental Arrows. I'm, hmm, I think I'm gonna kill her. Yeah, I'm gonna kill her, but anyway, here it is. Oh, I lost the buffs. Shit, my bad there. Lost the buffs, so I'll use Venomosaur again. Although I don't need it for the last attack. Now I'm gonna use Firebrand 2 and shoot a fire arrow. There we go. When you have all these buffs available that will buff your poison attacks and fire attacks and when you shoot simple things like poison arrow and then after that fire arrow to ignite the surface that they are standing on it will do stupid amounts of damage and it's also aoe well there you go i hope you guys enjoyed the build it's pretty much a fixed build you only have a couple of things that you can change if you want to go down this route and it's only Pyrokinetic and Geomancy. How many points you want to put in Geomancy and how many points you want to put in Pyrokinetic. I have focused on Geomancy because I feel like it's more useful because we have more Geomancy based spells and poisonous attacks.
that would be it special thanks to my patrons don't forget to check out the description you bastards and see you all soon Toodaloo, motherfucker! Hey.